to Build Brunch, the daily morning show where we talk about the latest topics in pop culture. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Allie Colbert. And I'm Lucas Tim. Hi, everyone. Woo! Today, we're going to talk about new details in the ASAP Rocky case, Jennifer Lawrence's true crime role, and appropriate airplane etiquette. Plus, actress Christina Toth stops by to discuss Orange is the New Black. But first, but first, Beyonce got real with fans about her weight loss journey leading up to her now infamous performance at Coachella. In a new video, she even revealed her weight. Take a look. Good morning. It's 5 a.m. And this is day one of rehearsals for Coachella. Every woman's nightmare. This is my weight. 175. Long way to go. Let's get it. Ooh. Some fans think Beyonce is taking the wrong approach with her body, focusing too much on numbers and looks. Here to chat about it is the host of In Case You Missed It by HuffPost, Miss Heather Gardner. Yeah. Woo! Hey, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get it. Friday. Wow. Woo! Heather, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Me again. So give us the down low on what's going on with Beyonce. Well, you saw that little intro. This was about a two minute video she posted on her personal YouTube page. Mm -hmm. It was in conjunction, as we now know, an ad for this nutrition diet called 22 Days Nutrition. And basically, she revealed her weight post pregnancy leading up to Coachella, 175 pounds. And over the two minute video, she just really talked about this vegan diet, her rigorous exercise and dance routines leading up to Coachella. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, someone said that every woman's nightmare is a quote from Beyonce. Beyonce said that. Yeah, she said that right there in that video. She oh, got, I'm gonna that. step. Yeah, she got, I'm gonna step on the stay at scale. Every woman's oh, nightmare. Every, so, yeah. Um, what is that? Every woman's nightmare. Well, I think that's kind of where this debate is happening yeah. here. Is it or should it be every woman's nightmare? to reveal her weight, to step on the scale. We, we as women kind of do that. I don't know, do men do that too? Do they think about that in the same way? No, probably not. I mean, so sometimes, women. but I, I, I purposely don't go on the scale a lot because I know I would be obsessed with numbers because exactly. I have some like flat OCD a little bit. You just so look in the mirror. I just look in the mirror yeah. and say, does this look right? I feel like most yeah. men go based on like looking yeah. in the mirror. Women, yeah. I think, are a little more concerned. We are numbers. very, I mean, we are. We're very concerned about what the scale says every yeah. day. And I think the, the debate here is that it shouldn't be women's nightmare. And Beyonce, with such a huge platform, is putting this out there and just falling into the stereotypical things that women are concerned about their weight and that yeah. we must jump on the scale and be a certain size, a certain number for whoever. So yeah. people are talking about this, but are they concerned about Beyonce revealing this or are they like empowered by it? It's a little bit of both. So I pulled some tweets here because it did have this like fierce debate online here. Here's one where Beyonce was, or this person was disappointed in Beyonce. He said, I'm disappointed to hear her calling her weight post twins, like you said, mm -hmm. every woman's nightmare and promoting a very restrictive diet. It's a vegan yeah. diet. Uh, perhaps use your star power to promote body positivity and beauty at any size. But then we had a lot of people who did kind of find it very inspiring because as the video goes on and as we saw in the documentary, yeah. she did lose a lot of weight. She got her body back into her Beyonce status here. She fit right. into clothes that she hadn't in a long time. And it was empowering to see that. So we had a lot of people right. coming to her defense. Yeah, I'm sort of on the, the track that she was more sharing her journey. I think yeah. after a woman has twins, she got up to over 200 pounds. Even when she mm -hmm. lost all the weight, she still looked curvy and healthy and natural. She did, right. yeah. So I feel like she was just sharing her journey, which I think is a, something that a lot of women go through after having a baby. So I didn't feel like there was anything mm -hmm. negative. Maybe it was the fact that it was, like we said, in conjunction with an ad. Right. Yeah. yeah. This, this is a very restrictive vegan diet. Yeah. But I think promoting. there's a couple components to this as a Beyonce fan I appreciate one she's rarely this vulnerable and when yep. you watch the Coachella documentary when she talks about um how she just and she says it in this trailer too she felt like her body wasn't hers yeah, yeah. and her dancing mm. is not based off a lot of technical skills a lot of emotion and feeling and yep. body movement and so it's really about I think getting from how any woman should feel comfortable with their body. And for her, right. what I got from it, she didn't feel comfortable in her own skin anymore. I mean, which and is very powerful to hear yeah. from Beyonce. And not even blaming her one bit. She grew two humans. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, Seriously. she did a lot. And so, so many millions of women go through this yeah. where they don't feel like themselves yeah. post-pregnancy. My sister's going through it right, right. now. You're, you're not yourself. You, you, like I said, you grew humans, you know? Right. So, but you're right. She was very vulnerable. We don't get to see her 5 a.m. voice, no. you know, anytime. We don't get 
get to see the inner workings of what she does. And gosh, watching that documentary, that inspired me. me too. But I did, when, she, when I watched the documentary, not realizing that this, this 22 Days ad was going to come out, when she said in the documentary, I'm so hungry. Yeah. Oh, mm. my heart ached oh. for her because she went through so much. And I felt, at the time, I felt like she was putting that pressure on herself. She was, yeah. To look a certain way. But then the other side of that, she is a dancer. She's a professional. She's the top of the top of her, of right. her uh, you know. genre. Yeah, exactly. So she has certain standards for herself. She has certain energy that she has to keep up. Yeah. Well, I, I just don't think you'd be able to do a show like that if you weren't sticking to a rigorous diet right. and exercise regime. She's training like an Olympic athlete. And and also, but I think what's funny, I've been seeing this on Twitter, how do you think the beehive is going to react? I mean, are they eating grass <laughs> in the park right now? Like, are they just, like, shoving vegetables well, you, in? You know what? It's so funny because I had never heard of the 22 Days of Nutrition. Uh. So immediately, I did a little Google search. You want to know what's completely sold out? Every single product mm -hmm. on right. the 22 Days Nutrition yeah. website. Yeah. So a lot of people really Loyal. get say, you've inspired me. But again, like, I mean, gosh, going, if you've never done a vegan diet before, I've tried it. I, so I said hard. I was going to do 30 days. I lasted about 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so really yeah. I could barely Very do hard. a week. I yeah. couldn't do it. It was, honestly, it wasn't even the meat. It was cheese. I oh, love cheese so much. Oh. I also just think, like, I understand this is her journey and her story, but you have to, I've been learning myself that when I talk about myself and my mm -hmm. own weight and my body dysmorphia, that I could also be triggering someone because right. people compare themselves, and if you look different than someone and they think you're closer to the ideal than them, it can be, like, hard for them to deal with that, and it can send them into a spiral. And I think when she's sharing this and she is, able in a position where she is very privileged she has help she has discipline mm -hmm. she has a schedule where she could use you know all this insane time to just focus on getting fit other people can be kind of stuck where they're like well yeah. I actually can't do this I work yeah. at the post office and I sit all day and yeah. I don't have time to just like focus on my body and are uh, many other things like if it's mental illness or a disability some people just cannot reach their goal weight and they have to learn to love themselves at 175 or whatever yeah. it is and also like veganism listen I try to eat vegan as much as possible but it's not for everyone for many reasons and sometimes it's economical like I was not, just about to say yeah. that. It's expensive. It's expensive, especially because this promotes organic mm -hmm. yeah. groceries. And let's not you know, forget to mention that Beyonce has trainers, nutritionists, people handing her her food. That was also a part yeah. that we didn't get to see in that little clip. But yeah. she had chefs making her food. Right. And for her and her that's entire you know, team of dancers and performers. But So I think that's why it's important that she shows that. Because other than just disappearing for six months and then coming back looking all tight, she's actually showing us. These are my struggles. Mm -hmm. This is all the help I have. This is my reality. I think it actually is important for her to show that because she is, her life is so much different than most women. Yep. And so she's showing it how, how hard it is for her right. even. Mm -hmm. And I feel like other women may give themselves a break because they're like, well, I, yeah. I don't have that. I guess I would agree with you if it wasn't an ad. Like, yeah. she's getting paid so much money to do this. And in fact, like, back in 2015 with the same 22 Days Nutrition guy, his name is Marco Borges, they launched a vegan delivery service together. So this is a this is her business. It's a business. Yeah. It's a business. And so that, to me, was what rubbed me the wrong way. Listen, I love Beyonce. I love me some Beyonce. I think she is completely inspiring. And this really did give me a moment of inspiration. Like, mm. gosh, she did this. She's dealing with the same struggle that so many women are dealing with, so many people are dealing with, and she's being vulnerable. But at the end of the day, I just had to remember, it's yeah. an act. Well, she also said she would never do that again. In the documentary, mm -hmm. after she went through the weight loss, and after the, the diet she was on, how hard yeah. she was working, all the rehearsals, she was like, I did it, I'm proud I did it, I will never do that to myself mm -hmm. again. That was so I hard. wish it was in the ad, to be yeah. honest, because, well, I guess that wouldn't be a very good ad. Now, what? <laughs> well, no, she, she did one thing. Women 22 are... days, I will never do that. <laughs> she actually did it twice, too. She did it for 44 days, yes. which crazy. is, woo, crazy. Anyway, what were you saying? And I was gonna say, strong enough to make these children then get back to business. Mm, I mean, that yeah. is one of her lyrics, one of her songs. Yes, it is. You know, so she we can't, be, can't get mad. She has kids and get that, gets I back mean, to business. That is one of the lyrics. Run the world. Run the world. Run the world. Run the world. Oh, man. Hi. Thanks so much for joining Thank you us. for having me, guys. Happy Friday. Woo! You can catch it in case you missed it by HuffPost on HuffPost.com and Yahoo's Roku channel. Rapper ASAP Rocky was charged with assault in Sweden despite claims of self-defense. The incident occurred on June 30th, and since then, fans have created a Change.org petition that has gathered over 70,000 signatures, and Trump has gotten involved. <laughs> so if you guys are not up to date on this story, essentially ASAP Rocky, Rocky and his crew were in Sweden and got into an altercation on the streets. He posted a video of the guy who they allegedly got in this altercation with sort of harassing them and following down the street, and then after 
after that is when the alleged like fight went down, mm -hmm. and then he got put into jail. Apparently, they hold him for two weeks to just like decide whether or not they're going to charge him with stuff. And then every celebrity basically is like, "You need to free him. You need to." Let and they, go. but they have charged him. Oh, they have right, okay. and he now faces a fine or possible two years in prison. I think what um, celebrities and uh, the congressman congressman from Harlem what they're complaining about is the conditions he's being he's being put in, and um, and uh, yeah, they I think there's. Also, some racial um, animus and implications that Sweden is not treating him right because of his skin color. Um, so I, I, I don't know how to comment on that, but I can. The Trump, the Trump stuff is quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah, the conditions ASAP Rocky are in are so much worse than the conditions at the border. Right. right. And shout out to Justin Bieber for like actually Joe. being who spread the chain, the 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 petition. Mm -hmm. He tweeted at Trump saying thanks for helping but like you know free those kids in the in the, in yeah. the cages. I think what's funny about this whole Trump thing is he is the time to get a call from Kanye West mm -hmm. when we're possibly heading to war with Iran. Yeah. Like I mean this is this is the classic kind of like a Trump a Trump thing. I mean we ASAP Rocky we should definitely there should be there's we should try to help him, maybe figure out what's going on and to make sure he's getting fair treatment. But the fact that the president of the United States is tweeting about this nonstop, thinking that this will get the black vote for him, yeah. is pretty comical. Yeah, I think he said something about the black community, and I was like, don't even say those words, Trump. Like, it's cool. Yeah, we can handle like, our own yeah. battles. Like, Sweden no, has done the African-American yeah. community so wrong. Yeah, yeah. Right. I was like, we'll speak for ourselves, Trump. Don't. Also, yeah. funny note that he said First Lady Melania Trump helped uh, was the first one to introduce ASAP Rocky to him. <laughs> is Melania Trump listening to ASAP Rocky as like is that like her soothing music to like get she through the day? Might she might be. She might be. She's like, oh my god, I just want this one more, one more, one more year, one more year. <laughs> um, it is just interesting that Trump chooses to get involved here. I feel like whenever it's a celebrity thing for him, though, you know what I mean. Whenever it's like he can be a part of the celebrity mm -hmm. conversation, because you've had like a lot of hip hop and rap artists speak out about this, and I like that Trump's like that's what he wants to be a part of. Yeah, well, I think I think it's interesting that like you know he'll do anything that Kanye and Kim ask. Ask him, yeah. and I'm just kind of like, well, now I want to blame like the Kardashians for the kids in cages, because right. I'm like, if you guys could just go to Trump and ask him to do that, then he would do it, because he seems like your little bitch. Uh, so like, get them out of the fucking cages. And, I mean, we'll get ASAP Rocky out too, but also the kids. <laughs> but like, like Shin, so let's start that petition. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Let's like... blame Kim Kardashian for it, and I feel like the kids will be out tonight. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. they why have... is he so interested in just? Doing what Kim and Kanye is celebrity. He, he, yeah, but, but I don't he's know. He's always been this way since yeah. he was on The Apprentice. He's he is, for lack of a better word, I'm sorry, a star fucker. He loves yeah, name yeah. dropping. He loves this. He loves this. Nineties Madonna and said that she, they flirted together. Not true. He loves this. This is what he. This is all he does as president. So when a famous person calls him, the fact that Kim Kardashian called Jared Kushner, mm -hmm. Donald Trump, Ivanka, like these. these so why these, don't we have more famous people doing that other than Kim? Because they don't. Because, because they don't want to be associated with associate him. him. I mean, you have to really like check your moral compass to be, I think, in business with him. But it's interesting this celebrity culture now with Trump, who is a celebrity as president, and how he thinks fame is currency to him. I mean, he does really think people with like, rating, TV ratings, and crowd sizes, and the amount of fame you have. So Kim Kardashian is a huge celebrity, so she, he'll take her yeah. call. But will he take the call of the Prime Minister of Pakistan? Who knows? Right. Did you know that Prime Minister of Pakistan arrived in the U.S.? No one was there to greet him. <laughs> no one was there to greet him. <laughs> no one but Kim Car Kanye West get him on the phone. But you know. Uh, I cannot. Yeah. Um, have you guys ever thought about what it would be like to get in trouble overseas though? I mean I travel quite a bit and it's always like my worst fear. It's to like get arrested overseas because the rules are just so different. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing that you're worried you're gonna get arrested? I mean, just anything, you know, like robbing, <laughs> killing, <laughs> stealing. Yeah, like, no, of course it's crossed my mind. Especially yeah. in like um, I mean, places like the Dominican and Mexico, yeah. where I hear like a lot of like young people vacation, and they're like, you know, you can just get in like a sketchy car and like something happens. Right. Yeah. But like, my friends actually almost went to jail in the Dominican. Wow. It was really bad. How'd they get out of it? They had to like have their parents wire them money. Yeah. Ooh. Yikes. That's crazy. Yeah, I think when there's a language barrier, and then also when you're drinking or something with friends, things can spiral, and you just you've heard those stories. I I, yeah. I would be very afraid. I'm yes. never. I went to <laughs> Cuba and I was in Havana, and there was sort of like this protest. It was this Afro. Cuban woman and she was protesting the government, which they don't love. And so a group <laughs> they don't love. Yeah, they don't love that. And a group uh, centered around her and then the police arrested her and I was recording because I was like, well, I don't want them to hurt her. And the uh, police came over and like smacked my camera down. He's like, no recording. And I was like, I can record. And I was like, I hope I can. I don't know what the laws yeah. are yeah. here. <laughs> but I was with my friend who's Cuban and he was like behind me, like, you're okay, you're okay. But I was like, I'm protesting in Cuba. I don't know if this is a good idea, but like I don't want them to hurt her. I this would woman. not have done that. That sounds so dangerous. I know, but I wanted to record if they did something to her. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it was like, I was like ready to go to jail, but like not ready oh. to go to a Havana yeah, prison. Yeah, that's you scary. Know? Yeah. yeah. 
Well, on that <laughs> note, <laughs> Academy Award winning actress Jennifer Lawrence has signed on to produce and act in the upcoming mafia film Mob Girl. The flick will follow the life of mob wife turned police informant Arlene Brickman. J-Log. J-Log coming back. I think I'm really excited for this. I, well, we all, I, mob films are a very popular genre. I, mean, I love mob films. A lot of yeah. mob films. The Sopranos, of course, one of the greatest shows of all time. And I'm, I'm excited for this. I think the story is really interesting. I was going to say, I'd never heard of the story. When I read it, I thought it was fascinating. Right. I, I, I'm blanking on the mob family that she Columbo? helped. Yes, helped bring down. But she became one of the most successful FBI informants. And you watch Sopranos. You watch the other mob films. You know, you're always nervous to people that become informants. Because they're going to find out. The mob's going to find out. You think of Andrea and the Sopranos, what happened to her. So this is cool. This woman was very successful. And I'm excited for J-Law to do this. And, and, and ha it sounds like a fun, cool well, film for her. I just haven't seen her in yeah, so where she long. Been? I'm like, where have you been? What was her last film? Dark Phoenix, uh, right? Yeah, I saw oh, her in Dark Phoenix. Oh, oh she was yeah, really good. Right. I don't but before that, was it like Red Sparrow or like? Yeah, I think or so. It's been like a minute It'd be before the Phoenix movie that it had been like two years. Yeah, ago. that she's not been a superhero. Right. right. And I think she's, I didn't know. she say like two years ago she wanted to take a break from acting? Well, I, I saw the interview on the Today Show with Savannah Guthrie and Savannah Guthrie was like, do you think you should take a break ever. And she's like, well, I don't have anything lined up for two years, so I'm kind of taking a break right now, but I'll probably see you in six months. So <laughs> she never right. was like, I'm taking a break, I'm not gonna do projects. But she she was taking a bit of time off. I mean, I know she's engaged. Yeah. yeah. That's good though. She had like a really, you know, when she started ascending, it felt like she was in everything for yeah, like four Hunger years. Games? Yeah. Ooh. Like she worked, I think, so hard for it. She had so many projects that I she deserved it. She's break had a great normal. career. From yeah. Hunger Games to then winning an Oscar to the just like a, wow the American movies, Hustle. The movie Her boyfriend looks in. like Adam Levine. <laughs> he does. Oh, he kind of does that same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. angle. It's really good that she took that like little breather though, because I feel like um, she was definitely like the it girl, and the media was cramming her in our faces, and we were like, we love her. She's so relatable. She falls. She eats pizza. Can you believe it? <laughs> and then there, she was like right around in that moment where people started being like, actually, I hate her. Mm -hmm. She's so annoying. She won't stop talking. And then I felt like she like took a break and now we love her again. So yeah. it's like she was like very in tune with like our vibes. I, I, <laughs> I totally agree because I was getting to the oversaturation yeah. point with her. But then I love that I've seen her on her downtime like on vacation with Amy Schumer or Emma Stone or Adele. Like she's friends with some of the coolest people I feel like. Yeah, and what? they all seem so funny. How can right? we forget, yeah, the, the Adele and Jeff Lawrence going to gay bars yeah. in New York City. That's so fun. I mean, that 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 I love that. She's like living her best and life. Speaking of a good. break, Adele's on a break, right? Yes. Wasn't oh, they got divorced. No, right? but yeah. no, from music. Well, she, oh. Adele may never be able to uh, do um, a yeah. tour ever again. Do a blowjob ever again. <laughs> <laughs> well, because she's had such problem with her with her voice, and um, I know. it's really sad for someone who um, is such an almost like a, yeah. will never be going tour again. That's okay, yeah. as long as she keeps releasing albums. Uh, yes. I don't really care if she goes on tour. We love those. Albums. I just need more sad albums. Well, it's gonna come. She's getting a divorce. I know. I mean, <laughs> it's, gonna be, it's gonna be a it's gonna be the best <laughs> album of the century. It's gonna be so depressing, so and I can't what wait. What if it's like secretly fucking happy? She's like, I hated you the whole time. We were like, this sucks. Sounds like shit. Ooh, it's just like really happy. Like, I that would was love if her first single was, I hated you the whole time. Yeah. That is such a good song title. Take it, Adele. Because you don't realize, like, I was in the car with my family, and like, my brother's like, play this Adele song. So we're listening to it, it's all I ask. And you realize, like, God, this song is so sad. She's like, all I ask is like to see you one last time, all this stuff. And you're like, God, Adele, I want you to be oh. happy. That song is oh. extra sad because it's like, I just want to basically like seep with you one more time. Yes. I don't care if you love me. I don't care. And it's like pleading. And right. it is so beautiful uh -huh. and sad. Cut the post-divorce album. You're gone and I'm <laughs> yeah. happy. Mm, 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 mm. It's just a cowbell. In yeah, song. a cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, moving on. The debate over whether or not it's okay to recline your seat backwards in a flight grows more savage by the day. Some flyers think it's a right while others find that it's an aggressive breach in the contract of airplane etiquette. We at Build Brunch are torn over this issue, so it's time to split the check. Okay. So I, I didn't even think this was gonna be a debate. But how are we to split? me, this was so obvious that you can obviously recline your chair all the way back. Yeah. Ooh. Nope. We I don't understand why wouldn't you? I didn't know people wanted to sit like this it's on a plane for six hours. It, it's not Please. that we want to, but the fabric of society is held up by social norms of justice and truth and right. What and and that, that we 
have to think of our common man, our common person, to think of how we would feel in that scenario. So I often, the plane, look back and I see the person, and you know what, I'm not gonna recline my seat because that will make you very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I will have my neck pillow and I will survive and, and that is that my That is ridiculous struggle. and so stupid. No, I don't think so. I'm I think if mad. everyone reclined on a plane, no, we all would be uncomfortable. No, no one can do work. What happens no one is, can do, that's you can't watch your because when you, when you recline, when I've never been like, this person just reclined in front of me. My space is taken up. I'm like, that's their right. Yeah. They're gonna recline. I still have my tray. I can still work. I use my laptop all the time next to somebody, behind someone who's recline. They're entitled to recline and also if they recline, you then recline, that's what happens. If you're, Let Brady talk. Yes. Well, I just have to say that I'm with Lucas. I, under, I understand your point of view. They recline for a reason. But I think if the entire plane reclines, it's a plane full of monsters. Yes. Because the pitch on these seats is about 30 to 31 inches, and when you recline back, you are in that person's space. What I recommend is to do a partial recline. Just yes. like take it back an inch, just to relieve that lower back stress, but you're That's not sick. infringing on somebody else's face. A little okay, inch. Okay, wait, so why do you think they designed it to recline past your little inch? They wow. designed it for comfort. I understand the design and I think that's great. But what I'm saying is the realistic approach is that you are in somebody else's space. Here, ready for this? No. Have you ever reclined all the way? Uh, only on overnight flights. Where yes or no? Have you reclined all the way? Yes. Have you ever reclined all the way? No. Have you ever reclined all the way on a flight? Yes or no? No, I've been. That is not, not even. even I no. sat on a red eye no, flight no, no, with my neck pillow and I slightly reclined. And you're I lying. survived. You're lying. You're lying. You know why? Because I was I was the yes. second to last row, and the person behind me could not recline all the way, and I thought of them and their experience. Your I'm sorry, way. bitch. You know what <laughs> tickets you buy. If you sit in the fucking shit seat, that's your problem. Me, little peasant hoe. I <laughs> make my fucking seats early, okay? And pay for extra leg room. You know why? Because I want to be comfortable. Just think about it. If you can't fly, then don't go in the ship box. I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I just don't understand. You're paying, when you pay for a ticket, you're paying for the capability to right. recline, period. That's but, why they have the recline. But we're just we, talking about having some respect. No, we're not talking about not, that. Like, you are creating a situation that isn't well, legit. It's, it's not disrespectful to recline something that's de like designed to recline. I think same thing if you let people out of the elevator before you walk in. There's some basic it's etiquette. Not the same, it's not right. the same thing because you, that is, you're allowed to do that. You have the capability of doing that. Yeah, yeah, you're but, allowed to, well, that doesn't make, is it right? That is, really? it is the way, no, it's 100% the way that the seats were created. No, but they're changing them now. They're the making plane. them less, less reclined because they don't want people but to invade their personal space. And then once they make them less reclined, are you gonna still go halfway what that allows you because <laughs> you wanna be a martyr and think you're such a good person? You know, the person behind you doesn't give a fuck about whether you die or what. Sometimes they, <laughs> sometimes they, that's no, a fact. I've had coming, I think it's a community environment, Oh right? yeah, do people so, peek over and go, Miss, I just want to say, <laughs> thank you so much for not reclining all the way. You're a hero. No, but I had people no. be like, uh, you they know don't. what? I'm trying to work. I'm sorry. Can you push your seat up? And I'm like, yeah, no, fuck. Yes. I, you I'll know go what? halfway. No, 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 I, no, no, I, no, no. I, I have never. I, I, I have yeah. asked, and I have asked somebody to fix their seat because my seat didn't recline. They reclined back. I literally had the screen right here. I go, I'm so sorry. My seat doesn't recline. Do you mind just going halfway up? He's like, oh my god, no problem. If someone look at that communication, about communication, manners, wow, healing the world. I've never been asked to push my seat yeah. back up when I've been in a recline. And if someone did, I would be like, no, you can recline too. We're yeah. whole reclining. I can recline. I'm allowed to recline. I, if someone asked me that, I'd be like, you know what I did? I smuggled pepper spray in my fucking badge <laughs> and you're about to get it. And, like, <laughs> and I would so pepper spray them in the eyes and then I would open up the exit and throw them off the plane. It's like when wow. we get too concerned wow. with what is like, I don't understand how that's an offense to someone else. It's not. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like, you guys created that situation yourselves, and that's why those people are telling you to not recline and recline. I, have, I fly, I used to fly twice a week, and never in my time did I ever, like, it can counter anybody who cared about the reclined seats. It has happened to me. It has No one's even given me like mild attitude. I'm usually the one that's like, hey, clean up this period blood on this seat. Because that's <laughs> happened to me three times. How about leaving your period blood on the seat is not chill? That's an actual That's argument. the worst offense. Yeah. Then yeah. check on that. I do like to be aware of where I'm sitting. Sometimes the emergency rows don't recline. Sometimes the very 
back seats don't recline. So, Sometimes the bulkhead seats don't so recline. So what are you saying? So if people are in those seats. That's what I was saying before. You know, it's like if they're in the back row and that last seat doesn't recline, but you're in front of them, I think that's cruel to recline because they can't recline. So it's more about, I think, being aware of other people's experiences yes. and trying to be a respectful human being. That's, that's how all we, I'm that's saying. That's how we will succeed I'm not society saying if we're don't more aware recline. of each other. I'm saying read the plane. But you know? it doesn't mean you're not aware if you recline. Yeah. It means you, you paid for something that you're entitled to use. You're entitled to be comfortable. It doesn't mean sacrifice your happiness, your health, dare I say. <laughs> yeah. Because Karen behind I mean, you, three hour flight to Toledo. If you do not recline, you're going to die. Right. No, and you're, no, you, no, can, maybe, you can play your music out without headphones on the subway, but that's annoying. So you use your headphones no, or whatever. That is not you, But you're entitled to. You're entitled to. Not the same thing at all. So you're not so they're basic, wild. They're basic you're so banners wild. that you're hold the like, society together. You can together. murder if you want. Like, you're <laughs> no, that's against the law. You're so wild. No, you can still do it. You can murder. People have people in this room have murdered <laughs> and are here Who free. Yeah, yeah, like it just yeah. There, every I'm not day you saying have you are bad people. I'm killer. just saying this. We I don't care what you're saying. We're not bad people. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that you are. I'm not that you are. I just think I think about others. People, it doesn't matter. I just think about others when I'm on the No, but I feel like you're doing it so that you can feel like a hero. No, 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 no. It's just it's just how I think. It's just how we're wired. You're so considerate. You're that considerate. It's yeah. how I'm wired on a plane. I know we, honestly, we all have a lot of space. When Ellie and I walk <laughs> off a plane, people fucking like us a lot more than they like you too. Okay, you little, oh, I'm such a good person. No, like, I don't. You're jerking yourself off in a mirror. No, we're not. I'm not. I'm not I'm I just said I, we're all, so we're all in tight spaces. Let's just be aware. I don't believe that you're that level of yeah. like empathetic. I, I, I'm telling you, that's how I've always whole, been. That's the only reason, because you have such a high level of empathy. That okay, you wait, not, 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 we're making this into like a different conversation. Yeah. We are not saying we are better than anybody. This is no, not that's like, what he said. This that's is what he said. Okay. He said, we're, you're not bad people. <laughs> you're yeah. not. I'm not saying. Uh, my, you I, guys are creating you like, character. You're creating a situation no. where by re fully reclining, we are like disrespecting people. No. And that's no. not, you're like, well, it's just respectful to think about the people around you. Yeah, and the rec like reclining the chair doesn't change their experience. It really doesn't. I think it does. I think it does. <laughs> hey guys. That's why we split the check. That's why we split the yeah. check. <laughs> We're going to come back to this. Right? Now it's time for today's guest. Actress Christina Toth is best known for her role as Annalisa in the groundbreaking prison dramedy Orange is the New Black. The show, which follows the lives of inmates in a women's penitentiary, returns for its seventh and final season today. Take a look. What do we do when we reach the place where we don't know what to do? We're going to get each other through this. So it will be like old times. Giving up is not the answer. It is good to see you. We have to find our own answers. You shouldn't be afraid. It's the first step in moving on. I read in a pamphlet. Maybe this is the beginning of a road back. There's got to be a way back. All right, all right. All right. Flavor. This is a special chicken. This is a magical chicken. Eh. No spoilers. Everyone, please give a warm Bill Brunch welcome to Christina Toth. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm good. I'm really excited to be here. That's yeah. great. And so the uh, we're excited to have you. The new season dropped today. Yeah. It What's did. going through your head? <laughs> um, I think I'm still on Clyde Cloud Nine from yesterday's premiere. Mm -hmm. I think I'm still living that. Um, you know, it was my first big red carpet premiere, getting to speak with interviewers. So it felt so nice to be welcomed and uh, you know navigating that red carpet felt like a breeze <laughs> um and just the event in itself and you know like it's the finale and just to be a part of it and being included in that journey i mean i'm lucky as hell yeah cool. and what was the audience reaction like last night yeah there was audience members with us um and also, like at, at in the after party, we got a chance to speak with some of them, and it, it's it's a family. Orange yep. is a family, mm -hmm. from um, cast, crew, producers, but also the audience members. And it's nice when we get to share that experience and hear from them and how Orange impacted 
them and um, to see how representative it is also because there were people that had experience with being incarcerated that were so, um, you know, wonderful with sharing that with us. Yeah, so. that's great. Yeah. And tell us um, what fans can expect from the final season, the final episode. Will right. things wrap up in a way that people are happy with? <laughs> um, well, I mean, you know, it's it's Orange and it's Gen G and um, she, she goes her way and Orange is very mm -hmm. loyal to the fact that they're unapologetic mm -hmm. and what you see, what you get. And they love starting the conversation, bringing light to issues, political you know, topics, so you can definitely be ready for the current events. Right. We'll have definite light on them, and um, there's there's no tying a pretty bow. There's definitely, like, let's open the window, let's throw ourselves out there, <laughs> and just be a human, like, open your heart, let it affect you, and then talk about it. Yeah. That was a great spoiler-free answer. <laughs> we would be very, very proud of you. She did say, she said, there's no tying a bow, but there is opening a window and jumping out. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. That makes me excited to watch. <laughs> uh, speaking of your character, was Daddy's second in command. Yeah. Uh, are we going to see your character evolve or change in any interesting ways? So last season, in season six, she was, you know, Daddy's mm -hmm. girl, and then started migrating a bit and becoming Barbara's mm -hmm. soldier, kind of, especially with at the end with all the shanking mm -hmm. and going to battle. Um, so I feel like Annalisa sometimes will operate in the shadow. Mm -hmm. Like she is very good at analyzing and studying everybody, understanding what her interaction with them will be like. She's very um, mischievous yeah. um, and foxy in that way where mm -hmm. she'll like, counts at the good time. Um, so I feel like there's a lot of that in season seven. Mm. So she does form new alliances, which um, as an actress, I was just thrilled beyond compare to get to work with the people that I get to work with. Um, I was waiting for you to say which nope. characters. I was like, gosh, <laughs> you're so good at not spoiling it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, there's there's some new things. Yeah, you mentioned the amazing cast and you getting to work with some new faces and the cast is so dynamic. What was it like for you coming into such an established show mm. um, with a cast that is, is so amazing? I mean, the first day that I was on set, there was definitely the imposter syndrome yeah. that mm. kicked in. Um, you know, I joined the family after six years of already been in place. Mm -hmm. um, but from the minute I got on set, everybody, like, they were a family, and mm -hmm. they make sure that you know that you're part of the family. Good. So that feeling of being welcomed and trusted and wanted there is such a warm feeling, and it makes you want to do the best work possible. Mm, definitely. And you mentioned um, before when you were filming season six, you would often get the scripts as the shooting mm -hmm. schedule would, um, was happening. Yeah. Was it difficult for you to find your character, to create your character, as you were kind of had to move so quickly through the production process? Well, so I feel it is true. Like, you always have your imagination going places of being like, oh, what's my backstory? Mm -hmm. Why am I in prison? And you sort of create key points that make sense to you, and that also go along with the structural sense of the script and what they give you, like say I'm a drug addict and I'm right. part of like the drug smuggling business and so you kind of associate things along, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, as the season, as the episodes would go, you'd have like just a tiny bit more information. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that, it right. keeps you on your toes and it keeps your imagination always boiling and right. always searching for new information. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned earlier that this season, which is so exciting because Orange is New Black, has caught up to current events mm -hmm. and will be touching on ICE detention centers and the Me Too movement, which are very serious topics. How do you, as, as part of this dynamic cast, balance tackling these issues but also keeping you know, the <coughs> fun atmosphere on set alive, keeping that mm -hmm. family aspect alive? Well, I, I op operate that way, like, you know, what happens in the work area, you know, won't necessarily affect my my private life. Mm -hmm. Like, someone was asking, did you have a moment where you said goodbye to Annalisa at the end? And um, no, <laughs> <laughs> I did not. Um, that, that's just my process. Um, and so it, I kind of went along that road as well, right. where you have, I don't know if this makes sense, but you have in a certain way you need to distance yourself from 
the topic to be able to talk about it clearly mm -hmm. in an understanding because if you're too involved emotionally then you don't let it serve the purpose it needs to serve mm -hmm. it feels too subjective rather than objective and letting everybody else that watches make their own opinion about it right. and you previously said that acting has um uh, reinforced the significance of the human experience for you. So could you speak more on that? Yeah, I was performing in Brussels. Um, that's about three years ago. And um, I'm originally from Montreal, mm -hmm. so I'm French-Canadian. And there was a partnership between one of our great houses back home, Theatre House, that was doing a collaboration with a great theatre house in Brussels. Um, and it does happen a lot. So I flew to Brussels to go and perform and the day after I flew in was um, the day that they were attacked by terrorists. Mm. So the, um, the airport was shut down, any means of transportation was shut down so we needed to stay. And of course when you're obligated to stay in one place, the first thing you want to do is get out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, I was in Brussels to do theater, and this human thing happened where you sort of start questioning, like, what am I really doing here, and what's my purpose? And the notion of providing theater and, like, giving an outlet to people that needed to get their minds off of what was happening is where I understood, oh, this is why we do art. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And how is it for you, because um, you're still actively doing theater, how is it uh, for you navigating going between TV and theater, like the difference? I love the balance. I feel <coughs> like it's very healthy because like the understanding of the medium is very, is very different. Like how you use, like you always use your body obviously because it's your, it's your um, tool, but you operate differently. Like there's a certain thing that the camera needs that you have to give it, mm -hmm. and then the theater needs is something different. And also just the way that you interact with people. Theater is there. Mm -hmm. You have like a conversation, like from the light of the stage goes into the dark, comes back, that light comes back to you, and there's like a circle motion. Um, in theater, people show up. Mm -hmm. In TV, people do show up, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So I like that exchange and difference and it's it's are there two different challenges for me mm. and when did you discover acting was for you um i was i mean i was always one of those artistic kids and thankfully to my mother who let me like i feel like she's a definite part of this mm -hmm. to you know let me run free and explore and um you know figure out what my art form was um, but starting age 14, I was doing like those high school plays. <laughs> mm. And then I met my mentor at 18. She was one of our great French Canadian actresses and mm. she taught me everything. She's definitely my backbone and um, she passed when I was in Brussels. So, um, but you know, she's yeah. still around with me. That's amazing. I yeah. love that. And you're just so naturally captivating. I'm so excited to see your career move on and do more. What else can we look forward to? Um, I am going back to theater mm. for the mm. summer and the fall. It's all here in New York City. Mm. Um, I'm actually very thrilled that um, being French-Canadian, when I was in Brussels, I <laughs> met another playwright from back home, and his play was just, it really inspired me. It's called See You, and we're giving him his New York premiere in September. I'm the resident artist of a theater company here, and so okay. I just said, to our artistic director, I was like, read this, tell me what you think, it might be good, I think you might like it, because I really like it. That's awesome. <laughs> so we're doing it. That's mm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. We can't wait to see yeah. everything you do. Thank Christina, you. thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. The seventh and final season of Orange is the New Black is available to stream on Netflix today. That's all from us. We'll see you on Monday, same time, same table. Woo!